Hello architects and developers and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with .NET. In this video today, you're going to learn how you can dramatically simplify the way you define your application code with native ahead of time compilation with .NET to dramatically improve the performance of your .NET Lambda functions. And we're going to do that using .NET 8. Yes, .NET 8 that went GA just this week. Let's have a look at how you can run that on Lambda in a simple way using the Lambda annotations framework. Let's get straight into it. Over 70% of you listening haven't yet subscribed to this channel. And if you scroll down and hit that subscribe button, I promise to you, that I will keep producing content that you want to see. If you reach out and you let me know, you hit subscribe, ding that notification bell, that lets me know that the content I'm producing matters and I promise that I will keep producing more of it for you. Thanks for listening. Okay, so let's now have a look how you can use annotations, .NET 8, native AOT to actually speed up and simplify your Lambda function development. This is a solution file that is in the serverless.NET demo GitHub repo. I'll put a link in the description. This is where we run all of the different benchmarks for all of the different ways to run .NET on AWS Lambda. And if you look at the project file here for this get products, you'll see that it is actually a .NET Eight. The other thing you'll notice is that I've got a reference to the Amazon.Lambda annotations, and this is a local project reference at the minute. That's because at the time I'm recording this video, this version of annotations isn't yet released. By the time this video is on YouTube, you'll just be able to add the latest version of the NuGet package of Amazon Lambda annotations, and you'll get all of this functionality. So the first thing I want to do when I start to enable native AOT is actually look at the existing code that you've got. This is a really simple Lambda function that's just going to retrieve a list of products from a DynamoDB table. And you'll notice actually through that simple thing, we've got 67, 68 lines of code. That's because you've got all of this code required to actually bootstrap the runtime. When you're using native AOT with a custom runtime, you need to actually bootstrap the Lambda runtime. And then you've got all of this kind of other code. And actually the only line of code that's actually doing anything in here is this one here that's actually getting the products from the database. Everything else is just boilerplate. Lambda annotations can now get rid of all of these things. So let's have a look at how you can do that. The first thing you want to do is create a new class in your project and let's call that assembly info. This is where I'm just going to add a number of assembly attributes and the first one I want to add is called lambda global properties. You'll get this from your newest version of Amazon Lambda annotations. This is a new assembly attribute that allows you to set some different global properties on your function. And I'm going to set this generate main property to true. What generate main does is tells Lambda annotations to use source generators to automatically generate all of that boilerplate code that will actually bootstrap the Lambda runtime. The second thing I need to do for this to work is I actually need to set my Lambda serializer. So I can set a Lambda serializer and that's going to be a type of source generated Lambda serializer and I can pass in my custom serialization content text. I'll put a link in the description to my other video on native AOT where I go into more detail about why you need to do this. So this is the first thing you need to do. Add these two assembly attributes to your application. And then we get to do the really fun part. This is where we get to delete a whole bunch of application code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make this a private read only. I don't need none of this static anymore. That can be a public function. I can actually now set that up to be created from my constructor using dependency injection. I can delete all of the code related to the bootstrap of my runtime. And then I need to this, actually need to set this method up to be a Lambda function. So I'm going to annotate this method with the Lambda function attribute. And then I'm also going to annotate it with the HTTP API. This is a get method and it's going to run on the root of my API. So you've now deleted a lot of code and you've added these two attributes. This gets even more exciting because you get to delete even more code. We can delete all of that. You can delete all of this boilerplate that's mapping up the input event from API Gateway. And you can also delete all of that other stuff there and simply set that just to be a return. And that's going to now be a product wrapper. We've now removed over 50% of the code in this Lambda function. All that's left in this Lambda function now is the bare essence of exactly what this Lambda function needs to do, which is just get all products from a database and return that list of products. So now if you go and build your project, you'll see that actually you get an error. 
there's no argument given that requires the required parameter of data access. Well, that's because I've got data access being injected here, but I've not actually configured any dependency injection. So the other thing I'll need to do is add a startup class to this project. If you're familiar with .NET development, you'll be well familiar with the startup class. And then I just need to add the Lambda startup attribute to that startup class. Then you can just add your configure services method that you're well familiar with as .NET developers. And then you can actually configure the startup of your application. So the first thing I wanna do is add a singleton for my DynamoDB client. And I'm gonna create a new instance of my DynamoDB client. And then I also want to add a products DAO. That's gonna be using my DynamoDB products. So I've now actually configured dependency injection. If I rebuild this project again, this time I will get a successful build because annotations now knows how to configure dependency injection because I've added this Lambda startup attribute. Okay, so now you're getting somewhere. You've massively simplified your function code. You've got that bootstrap code being automatically generated by Lambda annotations. Let's actually simplify this even further. Let's actually add all of our endpoints to the same file. So let's call this one get products, this one get product, and this is to get an individual product. So in here, I'm going to add a path parameter to my actual template, and then I can simply pass that directly in there as my ID. And then here I could say um, await var product. I actually going to configure my get product to get my ID, and then I could say return product. Again, there's not a lot of error handling going on in here, but you get the idea. Actually, let's simplify this even more. Let's just do a return there, something like that. So now I've got my get endpoint. Now we've got the list all products, the get a single product and the delete a product all configured ready. And finally, the last one we need is to actually create a product. So let's make that return product. This is now gonna be a put. So we can actually create a product, uh, put product. We'll call that put product. And then actually you can use uh, and actually you can use annotations that you're familiar with. So I can say from body, pull me a product object and that's gonna be my actual product I want to create. And then I can go put product, pass in my product and then return that product back again. There we are. So now you've massively simplified your function definition because now you've got everything in one file. This is gonna be natively compiled and actually you can go through and delete all of your other project files. So now you've got this single project that has all of your functions defined in it and all of that code required for native ALT is going to be generated automatically. So there are a couple of other changes you need to make to actually deploy this. And to do that, let's actually have a look at what happens behind the scenes. If I flip over to the documentation for Lambda Annotations, this is what actually gets generated by the source generator. It generates you your static main method. And then it will also put a switch statement in there that allows you to have these multiple methods in the same project. So you can compile one binary that you can deploy to multiple functions and you can control which method gets called, which handler is used based on an environment variable that you set. So if you're doing this, you need to make sure you set the annotations handler environment variable to be the method that you actually want to get called. So let's come back over to Rider open up our template file. And this is where we've got the SAM template for all our different endpoints. So I want to add an environment section, variables, and then I'm going to add annotations handler, and this is my get products. So that will be set to get products. And you do that same thing now for all the other methods. That is now done. And this template is now ready to go off and be deployed. So let's go over to your terminal window, and then you can use AWS SAM to build this application. Now, of course, because this is .NET 8, and you need your application to be compiled on the same processor and OS that it's going to execute on, you need to actually compile this application inside Amazon Linux 2. So to do that, you can specify the use, use container flag, and then you can specify the container you want to use to build inside. At this moment in time, there's no official AWS image for .NET 8. So for right now, you can use an image that I've pushed to my own Docker Hub that is something like this, and I'm on an ARM-based Mac, so I need to use that as well. So now I'm passing in an uh, image that I've pushed to Docker Hub that uses Amazon Linux 2. It's been compiled on ARM that I can actually compile this application with it. And now Sam's going to go off and build this application. So I'll come back in just a moment. Now that has finished compiling, I can just run a Sam deploy, pass in my local CLI profile, which is called dev, and we can let this go off and deploy to AWS. Now again, back in just a moment. That has now finished deploying. You've got endpoint. If I hit that endpoint, you can see that now works. So to recap, 
what you've done is taken a natively compiled Lambda function definition that had a lot of boilerplate code. You're manually bootstrapping the runtime. You've got different projects. You've got long compilation. And you've simplified that right down to a single project file that has this Lambda global properties attribute set to true, generate main equals true. And then you've got all of your API endpoints in the same code file, much like you would in something like ASP.NET. When you actually go and compile this, all of that boilerplate code will be generated at a compile time using source generators. So the only other thing you need to do is to make sure you set this annotation to handle an environment variable to the method that you want to be called. The method you put in here will match the method name in your actual Lambda function code. And that's it. The other really interesting benefit this has is that as you move from .NET 6 to .NET 7 to .NET 8 to .NET 9 to .NET 10, you change very little about your Lambda function code. Whether you're using a managed runtime in .NET 6 or .NET 8 when that's released, whether you're using .NET 7, .NET 10, native AOT, non-native AOT, all you really need to change is just this method here. If I set that generate main back to false, then I'll need to revert back to the typical model where I actually specify my handler as assembly name, namespace, class, method. If I then come to the next version of .NET and I want to turn native AOT back on again, I can flip that back to true. My Lambda function code doesn't need to change at all between the different versions of .NET. And that is all there is to it. That is just how easy it is to get started building with native AOT and Lambda annotations. And even at this moment in time, .NET 8. So if you want to use .NET 8 on Lambda, you can do that today. Just be aware that the build image I've pushed, you can use to compile your application code, but really, really test your application before you push it out to production. But if you want to use .NET 8 on Lambda, you can do that right now, today. <laughs> If you've got any feedback on this video, please reach out. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you and I will see you all next time.